a 17th century oil painted panel. Flemish school. Arriving today, split it in two. But putting it together, it's possible. And I'm going to invite you to come with me in this quite challenging project. And as we can see, uh, we do have here several parts in the wood that need to be put together. So finally, we can join the two parts uh, better and with more stability. So I'm going to start for gluing these parts with a height glue in a quite high concentration. And I start for applying it on both sides. And this step is important uh, because you're going to see it will glue them together and will be much easier for the next actions that we're going to take. And I will have to apply this eyed glue on both sides, on the back and in the front. And it's important that every uh, single part of the wood takes a little bit of this glue. And in order to protect uh, the wooden board to not the glue to the table, I will use a little bit of uh, mylar film and also those two blocks that will all together uh, they are also protected with a little bit of mylar. Uh, this little square was supposed to prevent the clamp to be in direct contact with the painted part. But in fact, after some tries, I did came to the conclusion that it's much better to put in this direction like you are watching now and this will make uh, the pressure just perfect and uh, the final result will be absolutely what I wanted and finally it will dry for some days in this position and in fact this panel uh, is the junction of three different boards and uh, between those two is also a part that needs to be glued back together and for that I'm gonna inject some height glue uh, not only on the back part but also in the front so uh, with this, I think I will achieve uh, a good portion of glue and it will allow me to get a good final result. It's important to be sure that the glue goes inside. So I try to open a little bit and I will with my finger give some pressure to the glue to go inside and by doing this I believe they will glue very well together and to hold these pieces together I'm gonna use again some squares of wood that I did prepare before with some felt and also with some mylar so the mylar will prevent that while those squares make the pressure uh, it doesn't glue and for that I will use this clamp this small clamp in this direction but also uh, this uh, larger clamp will hold uh, both boards together. So the conjunction of those two uh, forces uh, will allow the, the board to 
joined together and we're gonna leave like this for some two or three days again and it is time to take it out so carefully i will take those clamps off First the big one, then the, the small one, and I'm gonna look now how it went. And apparently it went very well. Not only in the front, but as I check on the back, uh, I can come to the conclusion that it went well and the hide glue really worked very, very well. And now it's time to take out the, the clamp on the other board and I can check already that the splinter is no longer there. So we have a surface there that is completely leveled so it's gonna be the right substract to receive again the glue and to hold it together but before we go to that step uh, I can see that the wood is not so flat and since it's gonna be in a weasel where it's gonna receive some pressure it's uh, necessary to add some kind of flexibility more to this dry wood. And to do so, I will create a small envelope with a wet towel that I put the panel over and I close uh, with a lot of tape. So I make sure it gets sealed. So the moist will keep inside for a while. And this will add some flexibility to the wood. And after being sure it's completely sealed, I will put some books over it. They will make pressure and they will help. So the panel will get flat. And when it comes to the time to take uh, out, I can see that uh, I achieved a quite good result. So the wood is uh, much more flat. And if we think it's quite interesting how, uh, how the moist does work on wood since it expands uh, the cells of the wood and because of the pressure, that was made by the books, I can achieve this very good uh, result. And now that uh, they are flat, it's time to prevent uh, that they don't curve anymore. Uh, for that, uh, I will start the process that with the sandpaper, I will on the back, try to take uh, out the some of the wax that probably was done before uh, and with the help of this sandpaper I can remove that and then after I will uh, apply this mix that I make with some waxes, some oils, uh, shellac and alcohols so I can uh, with the help of the brush put on the back and this will seal uh, the wood and it will keep inside the the moist the moist that was absorbed by, on the previous process so uh, it will prevent uh, the, the wood to, to curve again. And this is also uh, gives some flexibility uh, 
uh, to the following process. And for this step, I'm gonna need some archival adhesive and some felt, some woods and some mylar. And I start by applying this uh, adhesive in the wood. And this wood will receive then uh, a, a band of felt uh, that I apply in this direction, as you see. And over this felt, uh, I will uh, apply again some adhesive because uh, then I'm going to glue uh, another piece of mylar. This piece of mylar, it's going to be in contact direct with the panel. And it's important because the panel, it's going to be again glued with white glue. So this prevents from any other accident and all the precautions must be taken in between. Now I'm gonna take care of this edge of the panel because it's the edge that it's going to receive another glue. It may have some wax from the previous isolation that I gave so it's important to be sure that it's completely wood and it's ready uh, to receive the, the glue. And carefully I will apply in the whole edge. As you can see, the height glue needs to be in a constant uh, temperature so you can still be able to work with it. Otherwise, it will get very thick and it's not possible. Also, the properties of the, the glue uh, are bigger if the, the glue is slightly warmed. And I apply this uh, glue in both, both joints. And with the help of the whistle, as you can see now, I can put them together. And here I have to be very, very careful because I have to be sure that the painted area is totally aligned. Now, with the help of the, the woods that I did prepare before, I'm start to building the structure that will glue the panel together. And this structure is a, a conjunction of several uh, woods in several directions that will be uh, making pressure in several points with several clamps so it's a process that cannot be rushed uh, it has to be done very carefully and i also have to be uh, very very concentrate because there is no specific order the clamps must be put in but it's important to to put from one side and then the other side and then adjust again and then a little bit more pressure on this one and then on the other side again so it's more or less like a game that we play but uh, it's very important not to put all the pressure in only one point but it's uh, much better to make a distribution of this pressure for as many points as possible. And here we can have a look. So we see the panel is flat. Uh, also the field will give some little room 
uh, to uh, some kind of expansion that may happen. And here comes uh, again a little bit of uh, glue that I inject. And with the help of a clamp in the, this direction, I make a pressure so uh, the two boards of the panel can be glued again. And I always have to be very careful putting some mylar in the area of the join where the glue is so uh, it will not end uh, to glue, for example, the felt that I have here. So the clamp is not in direct contact with the painted area so I can protect it, it this way as you can see here and in the final I have to adjust the pressure from each of the clamps keeping them uh, in the right position with the right pressure and as you can see there are a lot of clamps but it's better this way so I make a distribution of the the pressure uh, in several points and this will allow a much less stress in any specific point and after drying for several days uh, it's time to take the clamps off and I will start by relieving the pressure between them uh, first one side then the other one and one by one I will take them off and during this process I really need to be very careful and very patient not to take them all at the same time because I couldn't of course but I still need to be uh, careful on relieving the pressure so I can remove one by one the wooden bars. And it's about time for the clamps that were holding the panel in the middle to come out. I took already the mylar and also the felter. And this is a very nice moment when I can look to the panel and I can see that it went together and went quite well. So now uh, I'm going to start the cleaning process, removing the old varnish and this excess of height glue will also come out. In the back it went very well, I am glad. And after doing some tests to see which concentration of solvent I should use to remove the old varnish, I can finally start the process. I already did clean several parts of the painting and now I'm going to pass to the body and face because this is a more entertaining part and it's very beautiful. And as you can see here, I'm using two swabs. Uh, one is with the normal concentration that I found out would be okay. Uh, but the other one has a stronger uh, solvent concentration for more difficult parts because not all the parts, the varnish, came out in the same way. So. I already made some tests and I came to this uh, conclusion, so that's why you see me using two. The religious themes were always a very big inspiration for artists, especially in the painting. And Fugue to Egypt is a frequent theme in the Christian art and is considered the final episode of the nativity.
And in addition, it is a frequent component in the artistic cycles of the life of the Virgin and also of the life of Christ. Joseph had a dream in which an angel appeared, warning him to flee to Egypt immediately. Mary and their newborn infant Jesus. This was because King Herod would try to seek the child out in order to kill him in what became the massacre of the innocents, another painting that maybe in the future I will talk about. And in this panel, Joseph and Mary are shown in the dominant scene with their infant Jesus. There are multiple narratives in this painting. The vegetation does not have yet indications of tropical trees as palms, so apparently they are in the beginning or middle of their journey to Egypt, so they can stay uh, away of possible persecution by Herod. The scene is painted with daylight, so no dramatic effect is added by the darkness of the night. And in this painting, Joseph is leading their donkey uh, with a rope, and this slightly detail can form a pictorial connection with other antique painting about the same theme. And after cleaning up all the varnish in the old panel, it's time to fill up uh, little holes, a little paint flows, and especially this join that is joining the two boards together. It's necessary by applying this material that the levels uh, remain the same so uh, we cannot notice the, the difference. Here I'm using my fingers uh, just to clean it up and also because I can feel uh, if there is a difference in the level or not and where it needs I can still apply a little bit more to achieve uh, a better level. And now, uh, with the help of a uh, small swab and distilled water, I can take the excess out of the putty. And again, I feel with my fingers uh, if everything is okay. And finally came the time that I'm going to clean this big one. And after uh, this cleaning, I will achieve a point in the panel that I need to give a special varnish, a resin, that will isolate the panel from my future work, my future painting and restoration. So I do apply this varnish as a very, very thin film over all the panel so I can get a very good isolation. And this isolation do not only protect uh, the panel from my work, but also in the future, uh, my work can be removed very easily if needed. And at this point in my computer, I normally see where I need to be more careful in the restoration. And now, finally, comes this part that I just love in all this process of restoring uh, the painting is when I can mix the paints, mix the, the varnishes, the, the solvents, and try to achieve colors. So it's so special 
and also be able to watch uh, the growing of the painting being put together uh, under the brush, under the colors. So it's a very, very rewarding thing when I think that I'm trying to put again together what initially the artist did plan to show. So for me, it's just a tremendous honor to be able to work in some kind of painting that was apparently lost or in a not good condition and being able to bring it back again together for all the ones that want to admire it is just a very, very special and sensitive thing. And finally, after so many actions, so many different steps on putting it together, we are finally finishing to paint this last joint that now is unifying what before was split in two. And we are coming near the end and getting ready for the final varnish. And for this step, I will use a gloss varnish, a varnish that I will apply in the whole panel. I will start from the middle to the right, to the left, bottom and top. And this varnish does have a different solvent that doesn't mess with my previous restoration. So I can brush without uh, being concerned about damage something. And I am confident that in the final I'm going to achieve a very nice gloss. But I have to be absolutely sure before I finish that I don't have any brush hair or any other imperfection in the painting. And in the beginning, there were two boards that were separated. But after several steps of restoration, they become one. And finally, the panel is together. And we can admire it as a complete piece of art. I hope you did enjoy to watch the process of restoration of this panel. And my channel is about restoration and conservation of fine art. So if you would like to watch more videos like this in the future, click on the subscribe button and do this. Activate the bell so you'll stay tuned for my next video. And I would love to read your comments. If you have any questions or any opinions that you'd like to leave, leave it in the comments. I will try to go to them all. Until then, we meet on the next video.